Hello, everyone. Welcome to lecture eight on introductory statistics. In today's lecture, we are going to move on to chapter four on probability. In section one, we will talk about the basic concepts and definitions. Section two, we're going to introduce some basic set event operations, the complements, unions, and intersections. And in section three, is a conditional probability and independence. And finally, section four is about a Bayes theorem. Now, let's talk about section one, some basic concepts and definitions. So uh, this section is about, this chapter is about a probability. So when we talk about probability, uh, it is some chance, right? It is a chance of something occurring. Okay, so uh, for instance, if you buy a lottery, right? So you may think about the probability of winning a lottery. Uh, it's very low, right? It's pretty low, but you know you're talking about the chance or the probability of something. Now, you're not sure whether it is you're gonna win or you're gonna lose. So it is some, some, some randomness there, right? So another thing is the weather. So whether tomorrow is going to be shiny or uh, rainy or rain, right? It's going to will, will it rain tomorrow or not. So that's going to be also uh, something you're un unsure of. Maybe sunny or maybe rain or maybe uh, cloudy, right? So something like that. It's going to be up to a uh, randomness there. Okay, so there are many other examples you have in life, right? So whether you're going to uh, run, you got a, a flat tire, uh, you know, flat tire uh, in the highway, right? So uh, <laughs> that's, you know, that's going to be something random. You're not sure, of, right? So uh, in other words, there are just so many things that people are unsure of that are happening every day and everywhere. In other words, we say randomness is a fact of life. So like uh, I give some examples here, roll of a die, if you roll a die, you know, it's, it's random, right? So you are not sure of what's gonna happen, what you are gonna get. Flip a coin is the same, right? So whether it's a tail or head, you're not sure of. It's randomness. So how many errors in one page of your C++ codes? Mm, not sure yet, right? So time taken to finish your first homework, the damage caused by the next tornado in Alabama, right? So maybe very big, maybe small, right? So it is random, you, we do not know. And time of extinction of a certain kind of animal, a certain species of other, uh, fish or birds and so on, right? So this are all random. We're not sure of, okay? So in other words, randomness is a fact of life, okay? There is a famous saying that uh, life is what? A box of chocolate. <laughs> you never know what you're gonna get from Forrest Gump, right? So the movie, the, 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 the very, uh, very um, famous movie, uh, Forrest Gump. And there uh, they say, life is a box of chocolate. You never know what you are gonna get, right? So that is, what do we mean here? Randomness is a fact of life. Because of this, we are talking about a probability. If everything is a pretty sure, you are very, very, sure of something occurring, then we're not talking about probability. We're talking about probability is because the reason why we talk about probability is because there is a randomness there. Okay, very good. Now, let's consider this definition, so-called random experiment. So what is a random experiment? Now, a random experiment is a process or procedure for which the outcome cannot be predicted with absolute certainty. Okay, cannot 
be predicted with absolute certainty. Or we say a process or procedure that has more than one possible outcomes. Okay, so for instance, in the previous example, row of a die, you think about this, right? You row a die, can you predict the outcome uh, with absolute certainty? No, you cannot, right? No, you cannot. Um, how many possible outcomes are there? Six, uh, there are six possible outcomes. So therefore there are more than one possible outcomes. Therefore, by definition, this is a random experiment. Now, uh, flip a coin as well, right? So can you predict the outcome with absolute certainty? No, you cannot. How many possible outcomes are there? Two, right? There are more than one possible outcomes out there. So flip a coin, this is a random experiment, okay? And so on, right? So for instance, time extinction for a certain kind of animal. So this is also something um, you cannot predict with absolute certainty. There are more than one possible outcomes, right? So uh, these in, Probability theory, we say all of these process or procedure with more than one possible outcomes are random experiments. Now, since a random experiment has more than one possible outcomes, now if we put all the possible outcomes together as a set, we got the sample space. So what is the sample space? That is the set of all possible outcomes of a random experiment. It's called the sample space related to the random experiment and is denoted by capital letter S. Okay, so this is a sample space. All right, sample space is a set of all possible outcomes. Right, you've got to list all of them. Don't, don't uh, miss one, any one of them. Don't add an impossible column of outcomes. So it's all possible outcomes. Now consider this example. Uh, are the following random experiments? Uh, random experiments. If yes, what is the sample space? If not, why? The first row die and record, record the number that shows on the top face. Is this a random experiment? Yes or no? This is yes, right? Why this is a random experiment? Well, as we said before, it is it is a process or procedure that cannot be the outcome cannot be predicted with absolute certainty. And there are what? How many possible outcomes? Six possible outcomes. So therefore, it is a random experiment. Now, then, what is the sample space? The sample space is the set consisting of all possible outcomes. So it is the set, it's using the set notation. So in the curly brackets here, so we have what? One, two, three, four, five, and six. And good. So you can see that this set is the set consisting of all possible outcomes. Okay, this is the sample space. Consider the second. Draw a die and see if the number that shows on the top face is positive. Now, is this a random experiment? Yes or no? Well, this is what? No. Okay, why? Because there is only one possible outcome, right? There is only one possible outcome. Why one possible outcome? So because the die is one through six, they are all positive. So for this question, see if the number is positive, it's always positive. So only one possible outcome. And we can predict the outcome with absolute certainty. I can say that it's always positive, right? So therefore, this is not a 
random experiment. Sorry, I flip two coins and their faces are recorded in order. Okay. Is this a random experiment? How do you think? Yes or no? Now for this one, the answer is yes. Okay, so you may got what? Uh, several possible outcomes. So the first is a head, and the second is a head. Right. Both of them are heads. The first is head, the second is a tail. The first is a tail, second is a head. All the both tails, right? So there are more than one possible outcomes, and uh, the sample space is what? Uh, maybe there are both heads, HH. Uh, the first is head, the second is tail, HT. Uh, the first is tail, second is head, or both tails. I believe that's all we have, right? There's no other possible outcomes. That's all. Okay, so very good. We have the sample space is this here. Now, uh, next, the time to complete uh, the first exam is recorded in a statistics class with a maximum time limit of 100 minutes. So, is this a random experiment? Yes or no? Okay, so this one is what? Yes. Okay, so if yes, uh, why? Because what? The time can be any value uh, below 100, right? Uh, greater than zero, but below, the, uh, below or equal, right? Than, than 100. So uh, how many possible outcomes are there? So there are infinitely many possible outcomes because it can be decimal points, right? It can be any number inside that interval, okay? So for this one, we are going to use the set notation, the interval notation to represent this set. It's going to be greater than zero, but less or equal than 100, right? So this is going to be the set uh, as an interval, okay? So you can you can represent a set as an interval. Uh, this is value. Or you can write it as S equals what? Using this S and the bar and X is greater than zero, less or equal than 100. Now this is also a valid notation. Okay, so it means what? Uh, this is a set of all x such that they are between greater than zero and less or equal than 100. Okay, so this is our sample space. Okay, so uh, you can do different uh, uh, set notations, but make sure that you have the set notation. All right, in the curly, if it is a finite, you want to use the curly brackets to include all the possible outcomes, and uh, like this. In this, right? So you can also use a interval or something like this. Now we are going to learn more uh, set notations in the future. Okay. Now, very good. This is our first example. Okay. Now let's consider another definition called events. So when we talk about probability, we are always saying this is the probability of something occurring, right? So the probability of winning a lottery, right? The probability of uh, getting an A in this class, <laughs> the probability that it's gonna rain tomorrow, right? So when we talk about the probability, we're always talking the probability referring to uh, some event, something. Now this something is defined as events. So what is the event? Here we give the formal definition an event is defined to be a subset, a subset of the sample space. Okay, so uh, a subset, say this is the green diagram, this is my sample space. So it is anything inside the sample space. So that is a subset. Okay. Now we say A occurs if the outcome of the random experiment is in A. A occurs, what do we mean by this event occurs? Okay, so now let's consider this example. 
a fair die is a load, uh, and um, um, and the sample space is what one through six, right? So we have a is one through five. Now this is what a subset of the sample space. One through five is a subset of the sample space here. So therefore, what a is an event by definition, and it occurs what if we got an odd number. So one through five, a is the event that an odd number is obtained. So we got a number, then a occurs. So if we got a one, then a occurs, right? So because one is inside a, so a occurs. So if we got two from from this random experiment, then this a is not occur, does not occur, right? Does not occur because what? You got a two is an even number. So a is odd, it's not odd. So a does not occur. Right? Does that make sense? Okay, very good. So what about B? B is one, two, three. So is this a event? Yes, right? So because what? One, two, three, this is set is also a subset of the sample space. Therefore, it is an event, okay? So it is anything below four, right? So below four, okay. So um, how about this one? C equals uh, one, uh, five, uh, and 10. So is this a event? Okay, is this an event? No, all right, this is not an event. Not an event for this uh, ex random experiment. All right, it's so not an event of this random experiment. Why? Because here 10, the existence of 10 making C is not a subset of S. Okay, so therefore C is not a random variable, uh, uh, event. Okay, very good. I hope that is clear now. Okay, so what do we mean by event? Event is a subset of the sample space. And we say this even occurs if the outcome is in A. Okay, now let's consider this example. A coin is tossed three times consecutively um, and the sequence of heads and tails is observed. A, construct a sample space of this experiment. B, find even A that, uh, even A that uh, the second flip results in a tail. C, find even a B that there are two heads and one tail. Okay, so let's consider uh, A, solution. Construct a sample space. Construct a sample space. Now we know that the sample space by definition is the set consisting of all possible outcomes. Now, all possible, you have to include every single possible outcomes, right? So now, Firstly, I want to ask you how many possible outcomes are there? Uh, how many are there? It seems like uh, S equals what? Uh, maybe head three times, right? So three times head, 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 uh, head, tail, uh, head, tail, head, uh, head, uh, what? Tail, tail. Uh, is a public tail head head, tail head tail, tail tail head, tail tail tail. Is that possible? Are there other possible outcomes here? No. Okay, these are all the possible outcomes for this random experiment. Okay, so you got three heads in a row. Head, head, tail, head, tail, head, and so on, right? So these are all the possible outcomes. So how many are there? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So there are eight possible outcomes. Are you sure about that? 
Is that really eight? Okay, now let's show a method to list all these possible outcomes without losing anyone. Okay, now let's consider that uh, you toss the coin is tossed three times. That's after the first toss, you may get a head or got tail. Okay, let's say that if you got a head, you go up. If you got a tail, you go down. Okay, so after the first toss, I may got a head or tail, I may end it up with this location or this location. Does that make sense? Right? So two possible outcomes, right? For one toss. And for after the first toss, I'm going to do the second toss, right? So if my first toss is H, then after second toss, I'm going to again got H or T. So I may end up here or here. And uh, also possible is if I got tail in the first toss, I may end up here or here, right? So now that is to say after the first two tosses, right? I may, uh, if I got HH for the two, I will be somewhere here. If I got H, uh, H then T, I will be here. If I got H and T and H, then I will be here. And TT, I will got here. So four possible outcomes after two tosses. Now, finally, okay, so I'm going to get another one. All right, the third toss. If it is head, this is tail, I will be somewhere here. Okay, and uh, something head and tail. Okay, and uh, This is head and this is tail and this is head and this is tail. Okay, so you can see that. All right, so after the sorry tosses, I may got a head, a head, a head. I will end up here, head, a head, a tail. I will end up here, head, a tail, head. I will go here, head, a tail, tail. I will be here, tail, head, a head. I will be here. Tail head tail, I'll be here, tail tail head, here and tail tail tail, I will be at the bottom. Right? So it seems like that's all the possible locations after three tosses. Now let's see what they are. Right? In order to tell this, I have to head, head, head. Okay. Now this is a head, head, tail, head, tail, head, head, tail, 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 all right? Head. Head, tail, head, tail, 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 head, tail, tail, tail. Okay, so these are all the possible outcomes. So we have what? All of them listed here without losing anyone, right? So this is uh, eight possible outcomes. Now you can also see a pattern here, right? So if we draw if a coin is tossed once, right, we will have either head or tail. That's two possible outcomes, right? So if we toss twice, the coin is tossed twice successively, I may have head, 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 tail, tail, head, tail, tail. So there are four possible outcomes here. So two to the power of two, if the coin is tossed two times, twice, right? So in this one, if it tosses three times, I have eight. That's what? Two raised to power three is eight, right? So, and this is the pattern, right? So uh, if, for instance, you can, if the coin is toying four times consecutively, then the number of possible outcomes would be what? Two raised to power four, that is 16, right? And then this uh, sequence can go on and on. Okay, very good. Now, uh, let's consider this B. Uh, even A, the second flip results in a tail. So uh, let's see what is even A. So it is a subset of the sample space uh, for which uh, the second flip is a tail. So uh, this is not good, right? The second tail is a head. Now, this is not good. This is good. 
this is good. Not good, not good. This is good, this is good. So we will have what? Uh, head, tail, head, head, tail, tail, and tail, tail, head, tail, tail, tail. Okay, so these are, this is the set consisting of all the possible outcomes for which the second flip is a tail. Okay, that's our event A. Now, C, part of C. Now, even B is there are two heads and one tail. So, two heads, two heads, one tail. Now, this is not good because there are three heads, right? This is good. All right. So, head, head, tail, two heads, one tail. And also, this is good, right? Uh, head, tail, head. And uh, oh, this is not good. This is good. Tail, head, head, right? And everything else is not good, so that is good. So B is this event. Okay, two heads and one tail. Okay, very good. Now here we have the sample space and also the events. Okay, now let's move on. Okay, talking about the probability. All right, so what is the probability? The probability of event A denoted by P of A represents the chance of A occurring. Okay. Now, it is the chance that the outcome of a single trial of the corresponding random experiment is an outcome in event A. Now, let's consider this. Consider ruling a fair die. The sample space is 1 through 6. Uh, A is the uh, subset, all right, is 1, 3, 5. It's even that an odd number is obtained. So uh, what is the probability? So the probability of A is a chance that A occurring, the chance of getting an odd number, right? So as we know, it is a 0.5. That is what we mean by the probability of an event. Now probability of A is the probability of getting an odd number. And as we know, this is one half. Okay, very good. Now let's consider um, this uh, proposition. Because of that, we have the following proposition. Uh, e is an event associated with a random experiment. Then this probability is going to be always between zero and one. Right? So the chance is a probability. So the probability will be between zero and one. Now, in addition, for the sample space, uh, the probability for the sample space is always one because the sample space consisting of all possible outcomes has a total probability. The total probability is one. Okay. Now, let's consider the following example. A, consider flipping a fair coin. Uh, let H be the event that the head is obtained, and let T be the event that the tail is obtained. Then find the probability of probability of H and probability of T. So uh, it's pretty simple, right? So the sample space is uh, head or tail. So the probability of H equals uh, one half, right? And the probability of T is one half as well because it's a fair coin, right? It's a fair coin. so. Uh, two possible outcomes, so therefore each of them is one half. B. Suppose we flip a fair coin twice successively, let A be the event that two outcomes match. That is either both are heads or both are tails. So find the probability of A. So for this one, if you flip the coin twice, so the sample space as we see is what? Head, head, uh, head, tail tail, head, tail, tail. This is sample space, right? Now my event A is the event that two outcomes match. So either two heads or two tails. So what is the probability of A? So what is the probability of A? Uh, there are two out of four, right? Two out of four, because it's a fair coin. So they are equally likely. So two out of four which is one half. Now you can see that 
the probability uh, can be easily found for certain uh, events, right? So now another thing I want to bring attention is, well, for these two examples, they are all fair coins. Because they are fair coins, these outcomes in the sample space are what? They are equally likely. Like a head or tail, they're equally likely. Uh, head, 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 uh, head, tail, tail, head, tail, tail, they are all equally likely. And there are many such ex random experiments for which all the outcomes, possible outcomes are equally likely. For instance, um, if you roll a die, right? So if you roll a die, fair die, then all the po six possible outcomes are equally likely and their chance is, chance is what? One over six, one over six. Um, say that you, you uh, poker hand. If a well shuffled poker hand, you randomly select one card from the poker deck, then uh, it's going to be equally likely to get each one, each one of them that are equally likely, right? So there are many such um, random, uh, there are many such, um, uh, many such random experiments for which the outcomes are equally likely. So now let's consider this theorem. All right, so consider a random experiment with M equally likely outcomes that A be an event consisting of N of A outcomes. Then the probability of A is what? N of A over M, N of A over M. Okay, so uh, that is the theorem to find the probability of the event related to a random experiment with M equally likely out outcomes. Here, M is the total number of possible outcomes. Okay, here, M is the total number of possible outcomes. Okay. Now let's consider this example 4.5. Find the probabilities of events A and B in example 4.3, given that the coin is a fair coin. Okay, example 4.3. So uh, yes, this one, right? So this one. So uh, if the coin is a fair coin, then the sample space is this random experiment is a equally uh, is a random experiment with uh, equally likely outcomes. So uh, for this one, how many possible outcomes are there? Eight, right? So we will know that M equals eight. So a total number of possible outcomes is eight. Now the event A. So how many possible outcomes in event A? N of A. So there are what? One, two, three, four. There are four possible outcomes in A. So N of A equals four. So this implies what? The probability of A equals N of A over M equals four out of eight is one half. So that is to say what? The probability of A is one half. What does that mean? Even A is that the second flip is a tail. So that probability of A equals one half means the probability that the second flip is a tail is what? One half. Okay, that's the probability of A equals one half. It makes sense, right? So the probability that the second flip is a tail is one half. Now, similarly, uh, we can also find B, right? So how many possible outcomes in B? So we know that one, two, three, there are three possible outcomes. So therefore probability of B equals N of B over M equals three over eight. So that is to say the probability of B is three eighths. Okay, that is to say the probability of getting two heads and one tail is three eighths. 
Okay. All right. So that's very good. <clears throat> All right. So now let's consider this example. Now consider drawing a card at random from a standard deck of playing cards. The sample space is the set of all the 52 cards. Let A be the event that a face card is drawn, let B be the event that a red card is drawn, find probability of A and probability of B. Okay, so now uh, here is a table consisting of all the cards in the standard deck. Okay, so there are four suits. There are clubs, diamonds, hearts, and spades, uh, four suits. And in each suit, there are 13 cards. So there's a one ace and the number of cards, two, two, 10, and the face cards, uh, jack, queen, and the king. Okay, in total, we have 13 for each suit. So uh, then the total number of cards is what? 13 times four, which is 52. Okay, 52 cards. Okay, that's why we have 52 cards here. Now, let A be the event that a face card is drawn. The face card are what? Jack, queen, and king. Okay, so how many A, okay, how many cards in A? N of A equals what? Uh, uh, well, N of A equals number of face cards. So what? 12 of them, right? So three by four is 12. Okay, 12, n of a equals 12. So therefore the probability of a, well, by the way, m equals 52. Okay, m equals 52. Equals what? n of a over m equals 12 over 52. That's what? Three over 13. Okay, and similarly, we can find N of B. Uh, B means what? A red card is drawn. So what is a red card in the standard deck? So those are what? Uh, diamonds or hearts, right? These are red, right? These are color in red. So how many are there? 13 times two, that's 26. So that is to say probably to B equals N of B over m is 26 over 32. That's what? One half. The probability of getting a red heart is one half. Okay, very good. So that's how we can use this theorem to find the probability of events for random experiments with equally likely outcomes. Okay, very good. Okay. Now let's consider another example. Assume that there are 100 people living in a small town. The following two-way contingency table gives a breakdown of population according to gender and tobacco usage, yeah, like this table. A person is randomly selected. Find the probability of the following events. A, the person is a smoker. B, the person is a male. C, the person is a female smoker. So now, okay, sorry. How to find A? Now, this event A is a person is a smoker. So N of smoker, how many smokers are there? How many smokers are there? So I had you to say uh, smoker, we don't care about the gender, right? So there are 23 male smoker, there are female smoker. So in total, there are 23 plus 12 is 35 smokers. So therefore the probability of smokers equals N of smoker over what? Over M, which is 100. So 35 over 100, that's a 0.35. So therefore we see that the probability that the person is a smoker is 0.35. Okay, very good. Now, similarly, B. Okay, so N of male, how many males? How many males are there? I think that's the male smoker or male non smoker, right? 
So that is 23 plus 26, that's 49. Okay, so therefore the probability of uh, male equals what? N of male over what? Over N is 49 over 100, that's 0.49. Okay, and finally C, uh, well, the probability of female smoker equals number of female smoker over M. So how many female smokers? 12. So it's 12 over 100. So that's what? Point 0.12. OK. So we got this is the probabilities, right? So uh, we um, find the probability of female smokers. That's 0 0.12, 0 0.12. Okay, so this is how we can find the probability uh, of events relating to an experiment uh, with equally likely outcomes. And uh, how to do that? Find the number of possible outcomes uh, M total number of possible outcomes M, and also find the number of possible outcomes in the event, in the event, right? Then this probability can be found. All right, so, uh, okay. So we will stop here today. And, uh, um, and in today's lecture, we talked about the probability, right? Some, what is, what do we mean by random experiments? What do we mean by events, right? And what, how do we mean by uh, this event occurs? And uh, then we talked about the probability of an event. Specifically, we talked about the probability, the calculation, how to calculate the probability of an event for um, random experiments with equally likely outcomes. Okay, all right. So that's all for this lecture, and I will see you in the next one. Thank you.